Why did Mickey Mouse get hit with a snowball? Because Donald ducked! Because he's a duck! You're watching The Icing Artist. To get started, I baked an 8 inch round chocolate cake and started layering that up with some chocolate buttercream icing. This cake is going to be delicious. I mean, who doesn't love chocolate? I also baked a five inch half sphere cake and that's gonna be for Mickey's head. I divided that and layered that up with some chocolate buttercream as well and then just crumb coated both of my cakes. I have caked so many Disney cakes, I can't even count because they are my favorite thing to cake. If you guys wanna see a full playlist, including Minnie Mouse, I will leave a link right here and just click the I. And of course, if you guys haven't already subscribed to this channel, click that subscribe button down below so you guys don't miss what I make next week. Now that our cakes are covered in chocolatey goodness, it is time to cover them with fondant. I'm gonna be covering my large round cake with red fondant and the sphere cake with black fondant. With red and black fondant, they're the two colors that I would actually buy pre-colored. Everything else I buy white and color myself, but I hate coloring red and black. If you guys have tried it yourself, you know my pain. You either get like a harsh kind of pink and like a gray, not good. So I just covered my round cake with the red fondant and kind of used my hands to smooth out the sides and pull it out until it was nice and tight to the sides of the cake and just use my fondant smoother to get those nice edges. I did the same thing with my black fondant. Half sphere cakes are my favorite type of cake to cover. Every other cake has edges, but spheres have no edges, so it just covers perfectly and so easily. I then added a little bit of chocolate icing on top of my red cake to stick my black cake on top, and I carefully picked it up with my spatula and just slid it onto the cake. Usually I end up with a mess, but thankfully it worked this time. And I really wanted to tie yellow into this cake, so for the border, I rolled out a log of yellow fondant, and then just used my rolling pin to kind of flatten Flatten that out. Then use my multi pizza cutting tool to make a nice long strip. Using a little bit of water, I just wrap that around the bottom of my cake. For Mickey's face, I'm just going to use some copper fondant. I just rolled that out and I'm going to be using a template for his face because characters are one of these things that if you just, you know, freehand his face, it's going to end up looking like a lopsided or eyes are going to be too big or his face is going to be too long and it's not going to look right. So I always like using templates. I picked what side of the cake looked best as the front of my cake and put his face right there. And then just smoothed it out with my fondant smoother until it was nice and flat and stuck to the cake. For Mickey's really big nose, I made a big oval of black fondant and kind of smoothed that out and stuck that right on. And it needed to have this shine to it. So I just added a little speck of white as if it's kind of glowing off the light. Now, Mickey Mouse has like like this, this ridge above his nose where his eyes sit onto, so I just used my veining tool and lightly pressed that in to create that kind of little ridge. Using white fondant, I cut out two large ovals for his buttons and two small ovals for his eyes, and then I just used my hands to stretch them out because I didn't really have like a long oval, and this is a good way to cheat. I placed the buttons right onto the front of the cake, completing his cute little outfit, and then for his eyes, I just used a large circle cutter to kind of create that same eye ridge we talked about earlier into his eyes so that way they'll sit on. For Mickey's gloves, I just used a template again and just used a sharp knife to kind of cut around that carefully. And then I kind of placed them onto the cake so it looks like he's popping out. And to create the little details on his gloves, I just used a black edible marker. And finally, Mickey's famous big mouse ears. I add some palace powder into my black fondant so that way they would dry nice and hard and stay sticking up straight and not flopping over. And then just rolled out my fondant nice and thick and cut out some large circles and then just stuck a skewer right in those. As soon as they are dry, I am ready to put those right into the cake. Disney fact, did you guys know that the voices of Minnie and Mickey Mouse were actually married in real life? How cute is that? And we're done! Our Mickey M-O-U-S-E cake is finished. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see more videos like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you guys can subscribe. And don't forget to come back here again next week because we'll be making something else in a cake. Bye guys.